Hello, today you're going to be finding out how to embalm and mummify a teddy. We're going to go from um, feeling a little unwell to the full 70 days of mummification to final burial. Okay, so this is Pharaoh Bear and Pharaoh is the ruler of all Egypt and at this time Pharaoh um, is a very important person. He's not exactly human, he's related to the gods and he has special jobs he has to do. Every day Pharaoh Bear makes the sun come up. Everybody knows that that's one of his jobs that he has to do and if it didn't happen they'd know who to blame. He also has to make the Nile flood every year. Now Pharaoh Bear, if he doesn't make the Nile flood, then the wheat won't grow. And if the wheat won't grow, then uh, people could starve. But he thought of this. So he's built lots and lots of granaries and they're all full of wheat. So if the Nile doesn't flood properly for one year, everybody's fine and um, if it doesn't flood for two years it's getting a bit dicey if it doesn't flood for three years then all bets are off people are going to starve and once they starve all of the enemies of egypt are going to um, invade they're going to kill the pharaoh and his family put everybody else as slaves and take over egypt so it's really really important that he makes the nile flood every year and that is one of his main jobs to do if the nile floods then everybody gets enough food and they can swap it for gold and slaves and spices and everything that a really really important country needs to have So Pharaoh Bear's not feeling very, very well, so he's gone to bed and, oh, he's died. Now, when pharaohs die, they have 70 days of um, being mummified. And this is what is about to happen. The pharaoh's body is um, taken down the Nile to a mortuary temple where his body will spend 70 days being prepared for mummification. The chief embalmer is the chief priest and they wear an Anubis costume whilst they do this. So the first thing they do is they slice a little hole in the side of the, um, the body and that's where you're going to pull out the organs. First thing that will be removed is the stomach and that goes into the canopic jar that looks like a jackal. The next thing that comes out is the lungs and that goes into the uh, canopic jar that looks like a baboon. And then the um, liver comes out. And last of all, the guts. And they go into the canopic jar that looks like a hawk. These are the four sons of Horus and they look after the important um, organs. Now, the heart stays in. You don't take the cart out. Whatever you do, you mustn't take the heart out. That's really, really important. Now, lots of people think that you take the brain out using a hook up the nose and then you pull it out, but that won't work because the brain is um, a, a jelly. What you need to do is you need to smack this right to the back of the head and then you have to make brain smoothie. It's really important to make it as liquefied as possible and then you have to turn the whole pharaoh over and it will drain out of his nose and mouth. It will take some time. When you've decided that all of the brain fluid has left the nose and mouth, then you can put him back onto the mortuary table. Mm -hmm. 
These ladies at either end of the body are called kites and they represent the goddesses Isis and Nephthys and they have to wail for the entire Egyptian nation. What they do is they express the grief of absolutely everybody. So for 70 days they come in and they're, oh, he's dead, oh, it's awful, oh, he was too young, oh, this is terrible, oh, we really miss him, why did he have to die? Every day for 70 days. Now, whilst the kites are wailing and the um, body organs are being taken out, another priest called a lector priest spends his days saying prayers for the Pharaoh, but also telling the gods how fabulous he was. Now, Ramesses II's lector priest said he had more children than he had um, blackheads on the end of his nose. So I think almost any kind of compliment goes really. So he made the sun come up every morning. He made the Nile flood. He was the best kisser in Egypt, captain of the football team, absolutely cracking teddy bear. One of the best pharaohs we've ever, ever had. Every day for 70 days, the lector priest is gonna come in and tell the gods how fabulous he is whilst those ladies still wail and everybody else tries to get on with everything else. Now, one of the things that I really like about the Egyptians is that they are very practical people. So even though he's dead, he's still Pharaoh. For these 70 days, he's still Pharaoh. So every day for 70 days, a priest will come in and bring him food and drink and perfume and everything that you think he might need. Now, in some religions, the only way you can get that to a god is by setting it on fire. That's what the word perfume means, through smoke to the gods. But the Egyptians were much more practical, so they thought that their pharaoh could absorb everything that he needed just by having it put close to him. So this uh, priest is putting the food and drink close to him so he can absorb it. Now when that's finished with, that priest will take the food back into the temple where all the other priests will eat it. After 70 days the body is wrapped and put into its sarcophagus and taken down the Nile to be buried either in a pyramid or in a tomb in the Valley of the Kings. The last person to see him is the next Pharaoh. The next Pharaoh will have to make sure that the transfer of power actually happens. So what the um, new Pharaoh has to do is make sure that the mouth is opened. He does that by putting a metal stick into the mouth to open it up and let the spirit back in. This is really important because the spirit has to be back in because it needs to answer questions when it gets to the afterlife. He says prayers for it, then the coffin is sealed, the sarcophagus is left and the new pharaoh bows and leaves. Once the tomb has been sealed, the Pharaoh's um, spirit goes through into the Hall of Judgment, where the heart, which has been protected under this great big scarab, is taken out and weighed against the Feather of Truth. If it weighs more than the feather of truth, it is fed to a beast called the Great Devourer that looks like a cross between a crocodile, a hippopotamus and a lion. And uh, once the heart has been eaten, the soul is sent to the howling wastelands forever. But if his heart weighs less than the feather of truth, he goes through into the afterlife where his little shabti models will look after him as um, fully grown servants 
and um, he'll have a great uh, afterlife and live forever being really, really happy. All his power will transfer to his new Pharaoh, the person who's replacing him, and everything will be great. Thank you very much for watching our embalming with teddies and clangers. Thank you.